My name is Nickel, oh Nickel, and this just in, breaking news. The president of High res Studios, the studio behind Paladins, draws a comparison between Brigitte and a character from Paladins. And the conversation that follows seems to be questioning whether or not Overwatch has copied Paladins. Doesn't seem that way to me, but we'll go through the information on both sides. The new free legendary Widowmaker skin for the StarCraft anniversary is now live. Jeff Kaplan posts the top 10 most played heroes for each skill tier at the start of Season 9, for each rank. All that and more today on Nickel News. Don't forget to hit the bell icon to turn on notifications, and you're definitely going to want to check out the link at the top of the description. So this first story is actually pretty interesting to me because, as most of you guys probably know, Paladins has been compared to Overwatch for almost its entire life as a game. And even when I made the video about the Paladins Battlegrounds video, which was Paladins applied to a Battle Royale style of game, a lot of the responses to that, if they weren't mentioning that Paladins had taken from Overwatch, were saying that it was taking from other Battle Royale games. At that time, most people seemed to say PUBG. But now there was actually a tweet by hi Res's president, Stuart Chisholm, who simply put out a side-by-side -side comparison image with a caption that said, Quick poll, if I happen to notice and point out any similarities between these two characters, would that make me the pot calling the kettle black or the kettle calling the pot black? This will keep me up tonight unless I get a clear answer. So the comparison that he's referring to is this image right here, where we see Brigitte compared side by side with the hero from Paladins named Ash. So I didn't know very much about Ash. I tried to learn a little bit more out of curiosity, but as I break it down, you guys are free to include any additional information down below in the comments, or of course, any opinions you have on what you take from all of this. And I guess the whole conversation between Paladins and Overwatch and who was first has been going on for a pretty long time. There are some similarities between the heroes in the two games, and specifically with this hero comparison, the biggest similarity is that Brigitte and Ash both have the armor silhouette. But the thing is, in the Overwatch lore, Brigitte's armor has a connection to Reinhardt's armor, which is explained in the information that we have from her. And even though Ash was released first on June 1st, 2017, Reinhardt has been in Overwatch since before May 24th, 2016, which was when Overwatch officially released. And it's something that a lot of people seem to be throwing into this whole conversation is that on Blizzard's side, they had the Crusader and Diablo 3 released in Reaper of Souls way back in 2014, which has an even more similar looking silhouette and weapon than Ash. You could probably just keep going back further and further to see where this style and this look originally started at. And the Crusader was actually represented in Heroes of the Storm back in June of 2015 via Johanna, which also kind of slightly resembles Brigitte, but pretty much anyone with that look would. The thing that's kind of interesting, more so than just the look, are the actual abilities. So taking a closer look at the abilities, Ash has a shoulder bash, where Brigitte has a shield bash. Ash has a siege shield, where Brigitte has a barrier shield. And Ash has a kind of plant the flag rallying zone ult, and Brigitte's ult is rally. When the president from High Res made this tweet, he followed it up with a way to actually answer that poll, and you can kind of get the sense that he wasn't completely serious about it. He was kind of saying it in a satirical way, as you can see by the choices that he has for the answers. But there were a lot of people that really dug into this conversation. One side, of course, trying to say that Paladins ripped off a bunch of characters, and then other people defending them, saying that Paladins was in production before Overwatch, which is also something that's kind of hard to qualify, because on the Blizzard side, Overwatch was born out of Titan, and all together had the better part of a decade worth of development towards that. So this is a conversation that never really seems to die out. Paladins seems to have a pretty healthy community behind it, but it seems like eventually the conversation always comes back to this direction of who copied who. I am really curious to see how Paladin's Battle Royale mode ends up turning out because there's a chance it could be like Fortnite where you take the Battle Royale mode and you apply it to something totally different. For Fortnite, it was their PvE style of gameplay and the building functionality. But for Paladin's, it's obviously the hero shooter aspect of it, but in a Battle Royale setting. So I'm looking to see in the long term how that'll actually turn out if that idea of a hero shooter Battle Royale is something that a lot of people really get into. But anyway, let me know what you guys think about this down below in the comments. Do you think that Brigitte is is too similar to Ash or that there's something going on vice versa. I know that a lot of people have really strong feelings about this one way or another. From looking at it, I don't think there was actually any copying that went on. And I don't even think that the high res president 
was completely serious when he put out that tweet. I think he was mostly poking fun at that situation. But as usual with anything like this, a lot of people actually ended up taking it really seriously. And actually, after a lot of this segment for this video is recorded, I saw that Kotaku actually reached out to him about a comment on this whole situation, and he said that it was meant as a lighthearted joke, as well as a bit of an homage to tons of Overwatch clone comments Paladins received when it first came out. And then he also included this entire quote saying that the tweet is mainly a comment of how absurd all these types of comparisons tend to be. I think it would be nearly impossible at this point for any game of this type to release a new champion that did not have obvious comparison points to other characters in other games, in some form or fashion. At the end of the day, in this genre, we all stand on the shoulders of Team Fortress 2 anyway. And that's pretty much something I agree with anyway. There were a lot of people that seemed to take this whole conversation way too seriously, both in the direction saying that Paladins copied Overwatch or that Overwatch copied Paladins. But like he states here, Team Fortress 2 came out before all of them. But let me know what your guys' thoughts are down below in the comments. If this is something that really gets under your feathers either way, in either direction, let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. So over here in game, we actually have the new skin unlocked, Kerrigan Widowmaker, with the text here that says, to celebrate the 20th anniversary of StarCraft, one of the Dominion's deadliest ghosts meets Talon's ruthless assassin. And we actually see Kerrigan Widowmaker right here. So let's take a look at her in-game. There's the little reward icon that comes up. So we have Nova equipped right now, which is actually pretty similar to Kerrigan. If we just take a look at Nova one more time to look at how she's all set up, and then we compare that to Kerrigan, which does have the Blizzard B right there. She is pretty similar, especially in terms of the armor. The armor is pretty much spot on, but that probably makes sense lore wise. Different coloration, of course. And then I think the, the biggest difference is probably the hairstyle. Obviously the hair color, but then being parted versus not parted. They both have goggles on top of their heads. She kind of has side swoop bangs, whereas Nova doesn't, but they're pretty similar. They're pretty, pretty similar. Just totally different color schemes. Let me see on the side, on the hip. I saw even on the hip, they have like that little tubing there. So they're, they're pretty much wearing the same outfit, just different colors. It is cool this is free though. This is pretty awesome that they're giving this to celebrate StarCraft's anniversary. As I mentioned a million times, I love StarCraft, mostly for the PVP side of things, but this is cool. All you have to do to get this skin is just log into the game and you're good to go. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments if you prefer Nova or Kerrigan. I think after seeing them in person, I still probably prefer Nova a little bit. But Kerrigan, I'm sure I'll be swapping into her from time to time. Over in the official Overwatch forums, there's actually a thread called Trickle Down Meta Isn't Real. And this thread was pretty interesting because Jeff Kaplan responded to it and gave the top 10 most played heroes for each skill tier as of the start of Season 9. So I'm just going to go through these really fast because I'm curious to see if you guys find that you see these heroes played at the ranks that you're familiar with. So in Bronze, apparently the most played heroes right now are D.Va, Mercy, Junkrat, Moira, Reinhardt, Soldier 76, Lucio, Genji, Roadhog, and Anna. Then in Silver, we see something pretty similar going on with Diva, Moira, Mercy, Junkrat, Reinhardt, Soldier 76, Lucio, Genji, Roadhog, and Anna. It's pretty close between Bronze and Silver. In Gold, not much changes again, just a few of the heroes switched the order. But then in Platinum, you actually start off with Moira as the most played hero, then Diva, Mercy, Genji, all the same usuals until we actually see the addition of Zenyatta and McCree towards the bottom of the list. Diamond, you start to see a bit more change. Moira, Diva, Genji, Mercy, Roadhog, Zenyatta, Anna, McCree, Tracer, and Reinhardt. And then in Masters, we actually see Winston added to the bottom of that list in the last slot. And for Grandmaster, it still starts off with Diva, but then goes to Tracer, Zenyatta, Moira, Genji, Roadhog, Lucio, Mercy, Winston, and then finally, McCree. So it does seem like a lot of the heroes make their way from the top down regardless, but it's not exactly every single hero. It is pretty crazy that in every single tier except for Platinum and Diamond, D.Va is the most played hero. And in those two tiers, Moira is the most played hero, assuming that most played is the first slot and it's in descending order. And the reason I say that is just because from a long-term point of view, we had the question way back when D.Va got missiles, how much she would end up being played because of that. And there were actually a lot of people back then that said that she was pretty much useless with her defense matrix cut in half. But it turns out in the longer term picture of things, there's a good amount of people still finding her pretty useful. One last thing that I wanted to end on was actually a conversation that also happened on the Overwatch official forums, where somebody started off by talking about a Numbani Spondor reflection issue. And in the comments of that, there was actually a question of whether or not map redesigns will ever be a thing. Like redesigning a map 
that's hated by the community and making it better. So David Adams, the principal level designer said, well, hated seems a bit harsh. How about less preferred? But yes, we have done it before and we will continue to do it if we think it's necessary or just makes the map better. However, it's a matter of making sure the changes are worth it by getting enough play tests on the map revisions and then finding the art time to be able to make those changes. So we don't have any sort of timeline. And are you just talking about Horizon? So we've seen this before, of course, with Eichenwald. Before that very first choke where the extra pathway was added, but maybe there's a possibility in the future there will be other aspects of Overwatch maps that will be redesigned in even more major ways. And if that was the case, I'm kind of curious to see what maps people would want to have changed and what aspects of them. Because with the whole Eichenwald thing, it was kind of hard to mess that up in the way that it would be if, for example, they just rearranged everything in that whole first point. They found a pretty elegant solution to fix that whole problem of trying to get to that first choke without having to force people to keep using May ice walls to get over it every single time is the only surprise way or jumping off the edge of the map and trying to get around somehow. But I'm curious if they ever did a major map revamp, which map do you think they would do it for? If you guys want to catch the live stream over on facebook.com slash onickel, I'll be live streaming today and most days. But if you enjoyed this video, dropping a thumbs up on the video definitely helps out a lot, as well as hitting the bell icon next to the subscribe button to turn on notifications. There's also a link at the top of the description that if you made it this far in the video, you probably would be pretty interested in checking out. But either way, thanks a lot for watching guys, and I'll see you next time.